we're learning uh, a great deal about how cancer actually grows and behaves. The, one of the things that we have learned is that the molecular background to the tumour is a very important determinant of tumour behaviour, but it also provides us with potentially therapeutic targets if we believe a particular molecular abnormality is contributing greatly to the growth of the tumour, if we can knock down that particular driver uh, by uh, an appropriate therapeutic, then we can make a major intervention for our patients. Immune checkpoint inhibitors are, are clearly a very exciting uh, development in, in the treatment of lung cancer. It, it's almost being regarded as the, the fourth dimension in, in lung cancer treatment. Um, the benefits of uh, immunotherapy are, are only just being realized and understood. We have a long way to go, but uh, in terms of trying to persuade the immune system to recognize the tumor as a foreign entity, and it is after all a foreign entity, we know that it's not self uh, in, in many, many ways, but somehow tumours manage to escape the attentions of the immune system and the immunotherapy is all about trying to um, remove those inhibitions and allow uh, the immune system to uh, react against the tumour and hopefully uh, take it out. Well there are a number of potential uh, markers which may be uh, factors involved in inhibiting uh, the immune response in lung cancers. But the marker which has really come to the fore and, and about which we know most is a PDL1. Uh, this is a, a protein on the surface of tumor cells but also on the surface of immune cells and it's the ligand for a receptor called PD1. And when PD1 binds to PDL1, it seems to switch off uh, the immune effector cells which may be present. Uh, we are beginning to understand some of the relationships between the presence of PDL1 protein in tumors and perhaps in the immune cells that are within those tumors and the efficacy of uh, inhibitors um, targeted against the PD1 PDL1 interaction. There are suggestions that different types of tumors within the lung cancer spectrum uh, might behave differently. Um, according to their PDL1 expression, um, but we still have uh, things to learn. Um, but at the moment, the selection of patients for uh, testing is something that we have not quite figured out. Um, I think it will depend on a decision as to whether or not a patient is going to be suitable for therapy. Um, at the moment, most of the data uh, concerned patients who have already received chemotherapy, so uh, that's a subset of, of patients for, uh, for a start. Um, we are talking generally about patients who have advanced disease rather than early disease, um, so these would all be um, subsets, although very large subsets of our patients with lung cancer. The data for uh, responses and for survival in patients who have been given these drugs are very encouraging. We are looking at long-term uh, responses and long-term survival in some patients. It does not necessarily appear to work in every patient and this is where potentially the biomarker selection uh, comes into play because it may be that for some patients or most patients with lung cancer who are being considered for an immunotherapy then a biomarker selection may be valuable because it may allow us to predict a greater or lesser likelihood of response or perhaps another way of putting it might be that if we can identify a group of patients who will not benefit that would be also be a useful thing because no one wants to give a therapy to a patient where they're not going to benefit when there are side effects uh, associated with the treatment.